when you want to apply statistical techniques to your research, to your samples, you usually assume that there is a normal distribution behind them. That's why you can do your statistical techniques of significance testing. So the farther they are away from what you expected on either side, the more unlikely it is that that happened by mere coincidence, by randomness. But in order to do that kind of testing, we have to assume that your sample is normally distributed. Unfortunately, very often that is not the case. In this case situation, we have a more or less normally distributed sample. So we can use the Z-test, the T-test, the ANOVA test, and also the CHI-test and the F-test. But these situations, they are skewed. When you calculate the skew, if the skew is positive, that means it's tail to the right. If it's negative, it's tail to the left. And in this case, we have two samples with different variances. If the skew, skew is zero, then it's more or less symmetrical. That's all it means. Only in this case we can use Z, T and ANOVA. In other words, it's important to find out whether your sample has a normal distribution. In column A, I plotted some observations from a sample. 25 observations, calculated the mean, the standard deviation, the count, the skew factor, which is positive, that means it is tailed to the right. So it's not nicely symmetrical. Is it significantly skewed? The easiest way of finding out is if the skew factor is greater than two times the square root of six divided by the number of cases, then we say it's significantly skewed. That verdict in this case is yes, it's significantly skewed. It's a, it's a thumb rule. It is much better to do a, what they call a normality test. How do you do a normality test? I did that here. I calculated the CDF value, which is 1 divided by 2 times the value I am testing. By the way, make sure that your values are in an ascending order. The next one is the previous one plus 2 times 2 times the value to your left. And that one we copy down with a double click. So in the background we have these formulas. Then we are going to calculate what the expected value is. We do that by using the norm inverse function. And we use the CDF value for the probability argument. The mean is A28, standard deviation A29. And we copy that formula downwards with a double click. Then we find out what the Z value is. The Z value we find by using the norms inverse function. The probability of the value in C2, the CDF value. It and double click the formula downwards. Then we are going to plot two kinds of values. We are going to plot the z value versus the original values and the z values versus the expected values. And here is the curve that came out of it. So this one is based on the z value versus the expected values and that one is based on the Z value versus the original sorted values. If the values in column A were normally distributed, that bluish plot or curve would almost coincide with the reddish one. That's not the case. So we know this is not a normally distributed value. So let me show that for another situation. In column A, we have observations. If I plot them in frequency bins, I get this curve. So you can see it visually, graphically, that it's skewed. The skew value is 1.62. It's significant. 
So I cannot apply my regular Z-test, T-test, standard students T-test or ANOVA test. But I can transform my data. I, I won't go into transforming issues that can be very complicated. It's all discussed in my CD and book, Excel for Scientists. I will get back to that later on. But in this case, it's a rather simple case. This is a log normal distribution. When you get this kind of curve, you can say, if I take the logarithm of those values, I could probably transform them into a normal distribution. So in F2, we use the natural log logarithm of a number, which is the ln function. And when we copy that formula downwards, we get the transformed values. If you put them in frequency bins, you get a more or less symmetrical curve. The skew is 0.26. It went from 1.62 to 0.26. It's not significant anymore. But if you are going to, to do your calculations on the transformed values, then you have to realize that the new mean has to be back transformed into the mean to the left. And we do that by using the exponents function. That's the anti-log to base e. So this one is the exponents function on the one we calculated based on the transformed figures. And we get that one. And the same for the median. So when you back transform it, it is 3.04, the same as it was in that group. And in this case, it is very close to what we had in the previous one. So let's test column A, whether it's normal, and then column F. So we will apply the normality test to column A first. Here are the values for column A. We sorted them ascendingly. We calculated the CDF value, what we expected, with the norm inverse function, and the z-value with the norms inverse function. And you will see that this was not coinciding with what we expected if it were a, normal, a normally distributed sample. So the original data were not normally distributed. Now we are going to test the transformed figures. And notice how they nicely coincide, of course there is always randomness involved, around that straight line for the normal distribution. So we have a pretty nice set of values this time. The only problem is we have to back transform them once we are going to do all our testing. There, there is a lot of statistics in here that I don't want to go into more details about. That would take much more time. I did that in this CD-ROM and that book, especially for 2013. An older version is for 2007, and they will treat the same issues. Module 1, data analysis. Module 2, plotting data. Module 3, curve fitting. And Module 4, statistical analysis. You can find these two sources, these two tools at genesispc.com. They will help you with almost all your questions you have.